This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. In the second denial, Peter denied being a follower of Jesus. They said, oh, well, you know what, you're, you're, you're with that Jesus of Nazareth. You know, they were pinpointing it, the follower of Jesus of Nazareth, that guy that came from Nazareth, he was the carpenter. You're one of his. You're one of his people. And Peter was basically saying, no, 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 I'm not a follower. The Gospel of Mark explained that Peter denied being, and it used this word, one of them. The, uh, the, uh, the, the girl said, according to Mark, the girl said, aren't you one of them? And Peter said, no, 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 not me. I'm not, I'm not one of them. Not one of them. I'm not one of those followers of Jesus. He denied having fellowship with Jesus. He denied being part of that, part of that group. He wasn't going to be identified with that group. Christians deny Christ that way all the time today. And we, we do it today. There, here's how we do it. By blatant denial or by passive silence, which is usually out of convenience. I'm just, I'm not going to get involved in this now. I'm not going to say anything now. Uh, probably don't want to get in on this conversation. So either blatant denial or passive silence, or by harsh condemnation of other Christians, or by quiet disassociation. I don't want to mess with those guys. You know, wow, they're, they're, they're wax. You know, they, they, those people are just wackos. The, the way they act, I don't want to be identified with those guys. And I'll be honest with you, some of them are wackos. You know, there are Christians there, you know, and you know who I'm talking about. Some of them are just, they're nuts, you know. And they get the holy hiccups, you know, and they start, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, you know. And uh, everything is praise the Lord, you know, and you're sitting and you know where they are at work. You can always find them because there's somewhere you're hearing somebody go, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And you just want to tell them to shut up. But the fact of the matter is that there are some people who claim to be Christians and they are followers of Christ. And we really don't want to be identified with that group because ident being identified with that group labels us. And so that's one of the ways that we deny Christ, by harsh condemnation of other Christians or by quiet disassociation. And then, most significantly, by denying Christ time for fellowship with Him. That's one of the ways that we deny Christ, by just denying time for fellowship with Him. Time where we can spend with Him, and get this, and His followers. That's really an important part of it also. We're, we're, to, we're to fellowship. The Bible teaches us that we're to fellowship with each other. We're to be a part of each other's lives. We're to be a part of our life and, and be connected to Christ, but we're also to, to be connected to each other. Let me remind you what the letter uh, to the Colossians teaches us. Colossians 3, starting with verse 12. Put on then as God's chosen ones, that's you, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all of these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Rats. You know, that's, those are, that's, that's really a heavy responsibility, isn't it? I mean, I get started on this thing, and I start looking at this thing, and okay, now, okay, I'm supposed to have compassionate hearts. Well, that right away, I'm not a compassionate person. So I'll try to be more compassionate. Kindness? Oh, come on. Some people don't deserve kindness. You know God. You know some people. You know how they are. i got to be kind. Humility, pff, that ain't me. Uh, meekness, eh, I don't even know what it means, so I can be meek. Patience. <sighs> Why do you have to put that in? Bearing with one another. Oh, yeah, now we're talking my language. That means putting up with one another. That means there's something wrong with you, and I'm going to have to put up with you. And if one has a complaint against another, now we're talking my language here, 
And if one has a complaint against another for, for forgiving each That's probably one of the areas that we fall the hardest on, discovering forgiveness. Because we want to hold each other accountable. We want to, we want to, we want to bring it, bring it. Hey, you know what? You're not acting right. I, I need to tell you that you're misbehaving. You're not being a good Christian. And, and so you, you need, you need to straighten up. What about this idea of forgiving each other? Oh, me too? Somebody's got to forgive. For what? Forgive me? Yeah. Because there are things in my life that need forgiving too. There are things that I say, things that I do, attitudes that I have that I need to deal with. And you just need to let God deal with in my life. And as Christ forgives me, you can forgive me. Remember, though, forgiveness is a cycle. God offers forgiveness, but it's not forgiveness until you receive it. And same thing with each other. When there are issues in our lives, I need to be able and willing to offer you forgiveness, but it's not forgiveness until you receive it and apply it in your life. And so we need to be willing to forgive. And by the way, there's nowhere in the Bible that it says forgive and forget. There's nowhere in the Bible that says forgive and forget. There's a passage that says, as far as the east is from the west, you know, are our sins, and he remembers them no more. But that's not doesn't mean that God forgets. God doesn't forget. What that says is that God doesn't bring them up again. That's forgiveness. Forgiveness says, I'm not going to... Once I've forgiven you, I don't bring the subject up again. Now, we get forgiveness, and then we bring it up again. But God doesn't. You know, God's not up there, remember that time that you... That's not God. God says, when I've forgiven you, it's like I'm wiping the slate clean. I'm not bringing it back. I'm not bringing it up again. That's forgiveness, and that we need to have that kind of a relationship as believers, where once we forgive each other, it doesn't come up again. And above all of these, put on love. What is love? Allowing God to do something in someone else's life through you. That's the definition of love, allowing God to do something in someone else's life through you. And so, above all of these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. You need to be in the Word teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the applied knowledge of God. So as you get into the Word and you discover the Lord and you discover Him and you start applying it in your life, that's wisdom. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. That's fellowship. That's what God says He wants in and out of your life. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.